Rest in peace, Quincy Jones. What can you say about a man who, you know, it's like, even if you just go by the last 40 plus years of his career, the impact that he had on music, the landscape, the change of the guard was a magical. I mean, a lot of people know him as a producer. Obviously, when you say you work with Michael Jackson, you go with the trifecta with Off the Wall, Thriller, and Bad. But he was also uh, the owner of Vibe Magazine, had a hand in the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. He did TV, film, and everything. He was a renaissance man back when uh, black people weren't getting those opportunities. You know, he started off as a trumpet player, uh, working with Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Bird Parker, different things, working with Miles Davis. A&R, first A&R black man to get there. You know, he produced It's My Party, which was a huge hit back in the day, doing arrangements. That's where he really cut his chops with Count Basic, and Billy Eckstein, and uh, Sinatra at the Sands, working with Frank Sinatra, you know, working with a who's who, you know. Obviously, you'll know about Quest Records. You yeah, obviously, you know about him, uh, Tim Lord, Rod Temperton, and Bruce Swedane, and Rick Filler Gaines. And producing works on Patty Austin along with Michael Jackson, along with the brothers Johnson, Ruth Shaka Khan, James Ingram, you know, amongst others. Uh, and you know about his work with Sarah Vaughn, Donna Washington, you know, and, and a who's who, you know, soundtracks, Roots, which was huge, obviously, you know, his style working with Herbie Hancock and so many others. I mean, producing We Are the World, which was a global phenomenon um you know soul bossa nova just exploring many different musical territories um and leaving a stamp on tv themes you know ironside uh you know just so many things that when you think of his name musically and creatively you couldn't get away from he lived to be 91 years old but it seems like the man lived to be 200 because it seems like he was just timeless and it was just so much that um you felt and you hear about his rough upbringings in the chicago neighborhood before he moved to seattle before he later met up with ray charles and what a friendship that was and you know you think about all that um he played piano trumpet player he was okay you know he had an incredible ear for putting artistry with one another. Because for instance, I'll give you an example. I remember with the Brothers Johnson Strawberry Letter 23, which was a cover of Shiggy Otis' song. And he got Lee Ritten out to play the guitar part or how he got the cast from Toto to write Human Nature for Michael Jackson. Like he always had instincts. You know, that's how he got Rod Temperton. He, he had instincts. He had a way of just knowing where it's detail. His ears were very distinctive. You know, 50 years ago, and I was thinking about doing a video about it, uh, he overcame a brain aneurysm. A lot of people don't know that. You know, quite a mover in the shaking industry, crossed over, and had incredible success. And arguably the most celebrated and decorated music producer ever. You know, you can make the case he's kind of like the Bill Russell of music producers, if you want to go there, because... He was doing it in a time when it wasn't fashionable. And for a lot of people, he's the standard of what music producers are. You know, and you think about um, the top tier producers and the people who've left an imprint and the guys that have changed the course of what you hear, what you see and sound. He is always in a discussion because most people associate that with the title that he did. And he always was like in tune to technology. And he's also had the, the reality of telling people to check egos at the door, he was able to blend. You know, he always knew what he wanted in terms of the stylings and so many artists, you know, and so many classic songs that when you think about it, um, came through it. One of the trailblazers and ruckus that he was associated with was Walking Space, which came out in 69. And that was the one that was the jazz crossover fusion record that was huge. You know, he always had an ear for contemporary he could he could dance that fine line ironically one of the first records on his quest records was george benson's give the night album and which he produced and it was a george benson had to be one of those kind of artists that falls into that category of balancing jazz r&b and pop and that's what quincy jones did he was like an amalgam of 
being able to juggle so much along with dabbling with hip hop, dabbling obviously from bebop to hip hop and everything in between. So there wasn't much that that guy didn't know or didn't hear. He was always listening to world music all over the world, always looking and surfing for uh, new distinctive talents and just staying fresh, you know, musically, um, you know. Now, on the other side of his life was pretty complicated. He was a complicated dude and there's a lot of stuff that goes on. Uh, some people will say a lot of different things about his personal life, a lot of different things. And only if that comes about upon requests with people that people talk about, that, that may come about. But on the musical side, um, I will say this for me. I think he was a great, great arranger. I think he was a really good producer because he had a lot of collaborations. And Michael Jackson and him did collaborate. He butted a lot of heads in the studio. He had, especially with female artists, the stories with him and Aretha Franklin and Donna Summer are well documented. And with Michael Jackson and others. You know, discover bringing Tevin Campbell on board. He always talked about when he met young artists at artistry. But he got results. You know, he's one of those guys working with Sierra Garrett, working with different people. He, you know, he had a lot of people in his camp. You had guys like Glenn Ballard, who started off in the Quincy Jones camp, but went on to do, you know, work with uh, Lannis Morissette, Jagged Little Pill. So he had a lot of uh, who's who who came through him. And I mentioned Greg Philogaines who played in all those records. And Quincy Jones was like setting standards. He was a standard bearer of bridging so many musical gaps, textures, and landscapes. So, you know, you want to say rest in peace to a very compelling, complex musical figure who left an indelible mark on music in the world. And he won't soon be forgotten. He was one of one, you know. One of those artists that he got everything out of his system and his soul. So, rest in peace, Quincy Jones, age 91. And uh, feel free to leave thoughts and takes. And I shall respond. Stay safe, stay blessed, stay woke, stay free. And I look forward to hearing on this particular Remembering Quincy Jones. I'm out.